I have a question for you. Oh, wow. You're just jumping right in. Yes. I thought it was going to be like, how was your weekend? No. How no. was your day? No, What's no, going no, no. on? All right. You're just fine. I am just curious. Skip the niceties. Because I feel like if I like walk with you or with dad, we pass like a, a stranger or something, you guys will always say hi to each other. Or something of the sorts, right? Like, whatever strangers walking by. When Shelby and I are hmm. walking, we just completely ignore anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you have That's a giant around. fuck you put on your forehead so people <laughs> yes. go away? Well, it's like, I feel like we, like, you guys always pause whatever conversation we're in to say hi to this person. Shelby and I just continue our conversation as we're walking past and we don't really acknowledge the other people. Sometimes that's they an observation. S- that is not a question. Well, but like, why? Why do you? <laughs> okay. <laughs> why do you do that? But like, why? Well, first of all, I will point out that uh, that is more so your father than me. Oh, one hundred percent. If I am by myself, sometimes I will greet people. Uh, other times, I will pretend I do not see them. I'm like, oh, look at my phone. Like, <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I just feel like it's such a, a common thing i see like the older the generation it is the more likely they are to talk to just like random strangers and it always surprises me because like i feel like so many people in our generation just don't do that unless you've already met the person hmm yeah i you know what i i do i wonder if that is a generational thing or a personal thing i don't know maybe i don't know i feel like i mostly see it generationally Really? Because the only time I see it from people my age or slightly older or younger or whatever is um, like if they've already met them. Like even if it was only once, mm-hmm. then they're, they're going to say something. Oh, for sure. Yeah. But if you've never met them before mm. or have never talked to them before, you're way less likely to do it. You know, that's really interesting because so there are times I like to walk around the park and I just don't feel like dealing with people. Mm hmm. And then there are other times I'm like in a good mood. And so if I pass someone, I'm going to like greet them. Right. And I never thought to pay attention to age to, to gauge the response or whether or not somebody is also initiating like a, at least like a head nod yeah, or, um, just like a hi, good afternoon, good morning. Um, so I'll have to pay attention to that because, because uh, sometimes you know, people are like, hey, yeah, hi, woo, you know. <laughs> okay, I don't get any woos, but, <laughs> you know, uh, just like a good morning, good morning, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and if I don't see you, good afternoon, good night. That's from uh, the Truman Show. But anyway, I don't know if it is uh, um, generational and how people respond. So then there's, so the que- there's two questions, right? Like initiation and response. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because there are times I'll be like, good morning. And they will just either they're looking straight ahead or they just whatever will not acknowledge me. And uh, yeah. So anyway, I'll smile, but that's about it. I'm not going to talk to someone. (laughs) I don't want to talk to people. I don't. I don't care about them. Why do I have to talk to them? (laughs) This is one of those circumstances where I would love to have like a boomer in this conversation because I would love to hear if they think that that's rude not to greet people. Do you know what I'm saying? I wouldn't care either way if it's rude or not. So, well, but I mean, I want to know the generational difference. Like if they, if they actually think it's, it's rude or I actually do think that's another thing as well with my generation is we, and what's your generation? Gen Z. Yay. Yeah. Thanks. I'm just clarifying for anybody listening. I'm Gen X. You're Gen Z. (laughs) Go on. Um, But uh, like I think a lot of people in my generation don't necessarily care if something is considered rude or not. Like I think we care to a certain. That's interesting. We care to a certain extent, but it's not what drives us to do things. Like we're not going to do something just because it's rude not to do it because. Right. Like why, 
like I don't care if some random person that's walking finds me rude because I'm I'm not going to be interacting with that person at all. So I would actually wonder about the 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 definition of the word rude here because okay, you're looking it up. Awesome. Yep. <laughs> Offensively impolite or ill-mannered. Okay. Or having a startling uh, uh, abruptness. Of, well, I am very rude. Then. <laughs> <laughs> then you were very rude to me when you were born. <laughs> it was a very startling abruptness. Yes. Um, what? Uh, what did you? What was the first part of it? Uh, offensively impolite Off- or. Offensively impolite or ill-mannered or ill-mannered. See, now I feel like that is That's very then. subjective. Yeah. Like what is offensively impolite? And then also you have different people who have different versions of what impolite means, right? Yeah. Uh, what rude means, what, what politeness is. Yeah. People and- are very subjective to what's rude. Like some people want table manners a certain way. Some people don't care about t- table manners. Oh, some people uh, don't, older generations uh don't think you should wear a hat indoors yeah i never got that i never understood that and you know some of this stuff i'm sure if we were to look into it if we were going to go do some research and say like where did different traditions come from or what you know uh i'm sure we there would be some kind of origin or whatever but my guess is that here, actually, this is a sort of a question and a guess at the same time. There are certain things that are considered manners, right? That you would look back, like if you were watching like a period piece movie, or if you were reading a book, or if you were maybe even looking at historical documents or something, you would see like certain conventions, maybe around dining, around having guests or whatever. But my question would be, um, how many of those are only in the richer levels, right? Like, yeah. like these were agreed upon manners by the moneyed people of society. Yes. Yeah. And, and how many were like generally, you know what I'm saying? And, and so if my guess is correct, that it is based on people with money, then that is not just, this is good manners. It is, these are the things that show me you have money and you belong in my circle. That's another thing I think that has changed societally is that I think a lot of people took things without questioning it in the past. Oh yeah. But I think like now my generation and actually started with millennials really have been questioning all those things. I would say no questioning things did not start. Start with well, okay. millennials. Yes, I just meant it became <laughs> a big thing with with I millennials what, because you have all of those articles about. Oh, millennials killed all these different things. Yeah. Well, here's a, a, one of the things I th- I think you're you're just it's not just that generation, right? It's the confluence of that generation and the internet and social yes. media, so that somebody questioning in one town could find others questioning in other towns and go, oh, I'm not alone and feel more emboldened to share their opinion and to fight back. That's fair. Um, Yeah, I just think there's so many people, like uh, usually older people that will find something rude but not have a reason other than they find it rude or that it's already established to be rude. Mm -hmm. And so then they just find it rude. Right. But I feel like there have been times in the past where I've found something rude or like I don't understand why someone does something and then I'm like try to think on it mm-hmm. instead of just like calling someone out and mm-hmm. I'm like why why do I find this rude? It's not like there's no reason behind it. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's some of these things are like ingrained in us, right? We're just like you so you just uh, assume Right. You go, oh, that's not right. And and you don't really question it. And I actually have, um, I think, a good example um, of this, which is people getting upset about, well, in general, people are, you know, pissed off about people being transgender. You know, like there's a certain segment of the population that is. Do they find it rude? Is, I mean, kind of. 
Um, they, they just think, you know, they call it transgenderism and they say it like shouldn't exist. Right. And even Trans- that sounds like a made up word. I, it is. And all words are made up if you think about it, but, uh, <laughs> True that. uh, the, the main objection appears to be, I mean, of, of course there's all these these objections of like, this is the biological sex and you can't change your biological sex and you shouldn't mutilate your body. Like those are all the the objections. Right. But even Uh, like, why do you care? First of all? Well, yeah, the children, Malcolm, (laughs) it's always about the children supposedly, except when it comes to make your children feel more comfortable. Right. Yeah. So anyway, sidebar. Uh, so, when you, but even before you get to like somebody who would be like getting the surgery or something like that, you have people who start to dress against gender norms, right? Yeah. And it's so fascinating to me how angry some people get about this. And then you ask them why, and they're like, that's not what the norm is. That's not, you know, whatever. And um, that's not how men dress, kind of thing. And I'm like, have you seen our founding fathers who you say you love so much? War dresses and makeup and like tights, high heeled boots, wigs. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like what is acceptable dress for different genders has changed so much throughout the centuries. So, so many things has just become, um, oh gosh, I guess neutral. I'm thinking of a different word, but neutral is the only thing I can come up with. Like between the g- genders, like I've, gender neutral is literally what the term. Oh, is. you yeah. mean you mean like um like all women and men now like wear jeans basically. Yeah, like like s- s- I mean, and even things beyond that where it's just like one size. Like they don't have a men's size and a women's size. Oh, so many places now just have like unisex, small, medium, large. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. And honestly, it makes it ten times simpler for one thing for everyone to just use the same measurements <laughs> instead well, of actually if we went by measurements that's what would be <clears throat> easiest because there are different ways that certain clothes fit most that's true there are some you companies know. where like medium doesn't fit me and some companies well, where medium does fit me i'm not but... even talking about the difference between companies i'm talking about the difference between a pair of jeans that would tip that would fit the typical male and a pair of jeans that would fit the typical female because gotcha. of like curvature and like stuff like that and well even just stuff you know. like average height for a man is like Right. Five eight or Higher five nine. Than, uh, and average woman's like a woman. five yeah. two. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, you couldn't go one hundred percent that direction. But my point is that people are getting very, very upset about something we have constructed. They're almost acting as if a man wearing a dress is something that is against nature, which I find funny because if they want to go back to their um, biblical roots, that they're often coming from we were naked in the garden yeah we didn't have clothes and i forgot to turn off my phone ringer (laughs) okay sorry about that anyway uh and malcolm just slowly reached over and turned his off no mine is off i was just making sure (laughs) sure. well you were better at this than i was than i am anyway where was i talking about um naked in the garden yes thank you (laughs) 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 <laughs> <laughs> so if we really want to go back we should put i'll be wearing fig leaves but um yeah it's just all of these things were decided by some people in power right and so at this point in our society for the most part i know there are fringes but for the most part like we've decided that um yes women can wear pants yes women can wear a lot of clothes men can wear but men cannot wear a lot of the clothes women can wear it's, yeah it's like it's very one-sided and it also kind of ignores like scottish people wearing kilts i, I don't know why <laughs> but this reminds me of like um there is some like protest or something at a private school that had a dress code, but the dress code didn't specify between women and men. So oh. a bunch of the, or I guess boys and girls. Um, uh, so a bunch of the boys that were like getting way too hot in their dress pants are wearing skirts to school. Nice. And so all of them were, all of the boys were wearing skirts to the school and I loved that. <laughs> but it's like on top of that as well, it's stuff like funerals and weddings and stuff like mm-hmm. that as well. Like mm-hmm. you're expected to come in like these really fancy 
dress oh, outfits. God, I hate that. I some people that do like themed weddings, I kind of understand if the people there can afford it. That mm, yeah, I I. But don't I, force people to wear stuff that's uncomfortable or that they can't like go out and buy and or afford. Or that they would have to buy especially just for that wedding. Yeah, exactly. Like I understand like, oh, you're going to a wedding. Typically you're going to dress up. Well, if you go to a lot of weddings and you have a dress you've worn to weddings and you can typically do that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but when you make it specific, like, oh, we want our wedding to look like this. So you need to buy this kind of outfit or whatever. That's very annoying, but I get very annoyed about weddings in general. <laughs> like I just, I really, I don't know what, dislike weddings. I, don't, I just don't know what the problem is between, and you know, I have, I don't understand this at all. Mm -hmm. Even to this day is mm -hmm. I don't understand the difference between informal and formal. I, yeah, I know that was always a problem with you growing up. And I, I sometimes wanted to fight with you about it and sometimes didn't. I, I can now get the difference between formal and informal. Mm -hmm. I still don't understand to this day how jeans are considered informal while like those like dress pants are considered formal when jeans look very similar and are like, like, I just don't understand it. They're both made from nice materials. They both look nice. Jeans are more durable. I don't like, I don't understand. I don't understand the dress pants versus jeans thing. I don't understand how jeans are informal. <laughs> That's interesting. Think, and I'm going to guess that that also has to do with class. Maybe. Cause I'm, I'm guessing that denim was probably developed as a durable thing for people who had, uh, labor intensive jobs. I'm guessing a lot of this stuff comes back to money. Probably. Like we want to separate ourselves from and usually the lowly people. Usually it's the older people that have the money who are able to set the norms. And then the younger generation that wants things different can't change right. anything. Right. Yeah. So I think a lot of this stuff is falling off over time because with each generation comes a new question. Well, why do we have to do it this way? So I remember like, honestly, I remember hearing a lot growing up, um, people complaining about, uh, people wearing hats inside. And I would be like, why? That is so dumb. Like, <laughs> what does it matter? Um, and, but that was like a really big thing, but I don't really hear that anymore. I don't really hear anybody go, Oh, why are you wearing a hat inside? You know what I mean? But yeah. of course I don't travel in moneyed circles. So maybe it does in the upper left. I don't know. But, I'm guessing but now, guess now, if yeah. anything, it's just like military households maybe yeah um yeah. or like government households i think a lot of time or we'll, super traditional yeah yeah and i think honestly a lot of that has to do with not only like the democratization of the internet but also the fact that there's way more rags to riches stories now where yeah. somebody who did not grow up with money then got money and then they were like, well, I still want to be comfortable and do the things I want to do. So I'm just going to be, I, you know. I don't understand why people who are in power, have a lot of wealth, have to impose their views on others. Like, why can't other people just live the way that they want to? Like, <laughs> like I cannot understand for the life of me why someone would want to live in a tiny house in the middle of butt nowhere. <laughs> But some people do, so <laughs> go for it. I'd prefer to be, you know, near town and with a good internet connection. But, but you would not decree that people cannot live in tiny homes, like... In butt f nowhere. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah it's... Uh, yeah. I, it, in the abstract, I understand power, right? Like, I understand that people like to have power. But when it pr comes down to practicality, I think the same thing like you do. Like, why do they, why do they care? But I, I know it comes down to control. People want to control all the things. Yeah. And they want, it's greed too, right? If greed wasn't a problem, uh, capitalism would look a lot different. It would be some kind of social capitalism, right? Um but we have elevated greed and individual success so much in our country that we literally will have people fighting against laws that will protect consumers and protect other people. Right. 
So it's all about just like control and greed and power. And I just don't understand not caring about others to that degree. Yeah, me neither. I I just, I, I can't fathom it. And getting back to sort of like politeness and manners and stuff, I feel like one of the things I want to say is that you can be a polite asshole, but you cannot be a kind asshole. Yes. Nice and kind are two different things. No, I would say polite and nice are similar and kind is different. Yeah. So there's uh, one of my favorite musicals of all time is Into the Woods. And uh, there's there's this scene where the witch is sort of wagging her finger at some of the fairy tale folk. And, um, she's like, you're so nice. You're not good. You're not bad. You're just nice. Get roasted. What? I said, get roasted. Yeah. (laughs) And I love that whole, that whole, uh, well, the song is great. The whole musical is great. And yeah, anyway, um, (laughs) the original Bravo cast, but I just, I, I just always think about that. Like, Nice is separate from good and bad. Nice and polite are masks we put on in society to deal with other people. But it doesn't reveal who we truly are underneath. That's why I think um, anti-heroes and anti-villains have become a huge part of storytelling now, or has at least been discovered as a huge part of storytelling now, because now you don't just have a a good for goodness sake and you don't have a bad for badness sake. You Mm -hmm. have like someone with trauma, like a good person with trauma Mm -hmm. and that might like lash out and do something bad. Or you have somebody who does horrible things, but they believe they're doing it for a good reason. Right. Yeah. 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 You have, um, People are complex instead of just like caricatures of good and bad. Yeah. Yeah. And I think what happens a lot with certain people um, is that they have convinced themselves that polite is the ultimate goal. You know, um, being, you know, you can object and say whatever you want to, but be polite about it. I mean, this was, this goes back to, you know, the civil rights movement when, um, Martin Luther King Jr. was doing all of his honestly peaceful protesting. And these, um, these, this group of ministers, maybe, maybe there was a rabbi in there. I, it was a group of religious leaders kind of wrote this letter to him. Well, they wrote this letter. They didn't kind of write it. They wrote this letter to him (laughs) and they were, they were like, you know, I mean, we just don't agree with your tactics. Like we agree with you. We understand you want rights and all, but like, you're just kind of going about it the wrong way. And like, you know, they were just sort of slapping his hand and, um, he, this, and this is where the famous letter from Birmingham jail comes in. It was a response to these religious leaders. And he basically says like the biggest enemy, um, of those who were fighting for civil rights was the white moderate. And it wasn't like, oh, it's not the, it's, he's like, the biggest enemy isn't these people who are actually actively oppressing us, trying to kill us. And, you know, it's the white moderate who's just like, well, you know, um, kind of like those memes when, uh, the kneeling in the NFL was kind of blew up and became a big deal. I still did not. And, and people were like, you absolutely can fight, fight for rights. We, we, uh, support your fight for rights, but not like that. And not like that. And it would be like a picture of someone kneeling and a picture of someone else doing like, you know what I mean? Like it was yeah. basically like you have to go through these pre-approved avenues in order to make well, change. Here's the thing about that too, is that he did go through pre-approved avenues. He literally asked yep. a veteran if it was okay if he did that. Oh, and they Colin Kaepernick. Said, yeah. yeah. And he, and the veteran he, said that it was all right. Yeah. Cause I think actually he was just going to sit and then the veteran was like, I think it would be more appropriate and respectful if you kneel. I think that was how that went. Yeah. And Martin Luther King Jr. also tried to go through proper channels. Like, yep. and the, the, and the thing is the thing, the big lie, right. Is they're like, well, you, we would just, we would agree with you if you go through the proper channels. Well, they want them to go through the proper channels cause then they can strike them down. And 
that's what happens a lot is that they do try going through the proper channels. They strike them down and then they're like, yeah. well, you probably should try going through the proper channels. Right. <laughs> and it's just this vicious cycle. Right. <coughs> yeah. So that's where like I get frustrated with the whole conversation about manners and politeness and niceness and, and civil discourse and all that stuff, because those things tend to uphold white supremacy. They tend to uphold the rich and those in power. They don't tend to allow for people with grievances to come forward and have a meaningful discussion. Yeah. And so people have to resort to protest. Yes. And then they go, well, we would have listened to you if you weren't so angry. That's what I don't understand as well as that America's constitution say that we have the right to protest, but then any time that some that people are protesting things we don't want them to protest, we get mad at them for it. Absolutely. Now I think there are some acceptable forms of protest and some not. Well, yeah, of course. I mean, I think there are people. That's who, why there's protests and there's like riots. Well, <clears throat> that's and that's this is a diff, that, that's a really tricky question, right? Because Martin Luther King Jr. said that the riot was the voice of the unheard, right? And basically saying that once people get to this point of desperation, then, you know, they, that breaks out. I don't think that makes riots right, but I think it helps understand them better yeah. of, of like why they happen in certain communities. Now you have something like January 6th, which multiple, um, GOP Congress people have called, uh, valid protest or valid discourse or something. I can't remember the phrasing off the top of my head, but they were like, oh, that was valid political discourse. And you're like, what? They literally <laughs> broke into the Capitol. That right. was valid. Right. And some people also were saying like, oh, I don't see the difference between that and these BLM riots. And I'm like, you don't? Like, <laughs> you know, I can guarantee you, you would have seen the difference if it was especially a crowd of black people attacking the Capitol. You would have seen since, it. Especially uh, since some of those were um, actually started by the police too, not even by the protesters. I, I'm curious about that. I've heard that as well, and I'm very curious about the 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 proof for that because I wouldn't be surprised by it. I mean, you go back, 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 and the FBI did some shady shit in that, you know, as well. But yeah, um, I mean, there's also been some things where it's said it started from one person. It was because one person in the protest like threw a bottle there's or that. something. I think that's the other. That's that's the larger picture to keep. As in soon mind. as there's an excuse, basically. Yeah, and I don't think I'd be able to find it this quickly, but um, I did have I did have something um, uh, tagged because it kept coming up over and over and over. Oh, there it is. Um, because people would, would conflate all of the black lives matter protests and they'd be like, these are violent, blah, blah, blah. And there was a research, there was research done. It said 93% of BLM protests have been peaceful. Yeah. 93%. So it obviously, you know, we know what's happening there and the people's assessment, um, is racist. Um, yeah. but like the March on the, at the March, I'm not going to call it a March that justifies it somehow the attack on the Capitol on January 6th that's not an acceptable <laughs> you know form of going outside uh, and that's beyond impolite <laughs> you know that is that is actively trying to overtake the government and cause violence. and they also killed people and that's the thing I can't get past is that I'm f firmly down this rabbit hole sorry but like people died and like over a hundred police officers were injured by the um, rule of law party. So anyway, ironically, yeah. But if you want to believe they're extremists, it was actually started by Antifa. Mm. Yeah. It's a false flag operation. <laughs> Everything is a false flag operation. Oh my God. Anyway. So yeah, that was a little rabbit hole, but, um, but yeah, so I thought it was, uh, I, I was just looking right before we started. Um, I was trying to find, cause you had mentioned briefly to me, you're like, Oh, I want to talk about this. And then I, uh, uh, I was like, Oh, I don't feel prepared to talk about this. And so I tried to look up like of generational, yeah. <laughs> generational attitudes and stuff like that. And, um, 
I found this article in the New Yorker that I thought it was going to be all like blasting Gen Z, but I thought it was funny because it was basically like, it's basically a send up of people being like, Gen Z has no manners. And, um, (laughs) one of these, one of the little sections says many people know that saying, please, thank you. And you're welcome are important elements of politeness in certain situations. However, alternate phrases are preferred when placing your order at a drive-through restaurant. For example, it is polite to play Baroque or classical music from your car and kiss the server's hand. Then of course say my compliments to Wendy, her majesty of New Jersey. (laughs) (laughs) should be majesty of Ohio because Wendy's was founded in Ohio, but whatever. Anyway, <laughs> I just, thought, but it's just such a send up because it's going back to this, back to this thing where it's like, why do we have all of these performative niceties? I saw a thing a while ago where apparently older generations are mad at our generation for saying no problem. Why? I, because apparently just like the appropriate thing to say is you're welcome. But I don't understand because I feel like it's more polite to say no problem because instead of because you're welcome is saying that the thank you was expected. But mm. saying no problem is saying it was not a problem for me to complete this for you. Well, and isn't, in Spanish, isn't this proper, proper response to nada, which is like literally it's nothing. Yeah, I think so. So I, I imagine that those it changes by language too of like what the actual idiom is i just don't understand it's like that's that person's way of saying you're welcome i don't understand that's why. weird why would anybody have or a the, problem with that I, I one thing that's creepy though is going to chick-fil-a and they all say my pleasure and that makes me uncomfortable <laughs> <laughs> getting some homophobic chicken some hate chicken yeah um yeah, that's. But I just find that creepy because all of them say it. But, <laughs> but my pleasure. Yeah, I actually, you know, what's funny is I always have been kind of creeped out by by that phrase. I don't know why. I think it's the word pleasure. I think pleasure <laughs> is just like that's not the context like, to use the word. Did you really get gain pleasure from scooping yes. my fries? Yeah, th- <laughs> that, that's like heading someone to say it, it just being like it was a pleasure to help you. Yeah, yeah. Now, it gave me pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> whatever your kink is, man. Like, whatever your kink is. Oh, that's funny. I find that kind of creepy, but I also wouldn't yell at someone for saying Yeah. <laughs> like, I just... Uh, yeah. It's... I do have... I have had some difficulties um, in generational... So there's a generation in between you and me. Millennials. It's crazy. I have mo- lots of millennial friends. And so what I've discovered is nobody leaves voicemails anymore. Nope. Like, unless it's a professional, like, doctor's office calling, you know. Oh, yeah, because you can't just send your doctor a text. Right, yeah. Well, actually, you can. My I can text my dentist. Depends on the doctor. Yes. How about that? But um, I, uh, so I started to notice that at one point, and then I was like, Cool, I'd rather text anyway. Um, but I also noticed at one point people started saying to me, oh, I called you. All, and all they would do is call, right? Mm-hmm. They didn't leave a voicemail. They didn't text, like, give me a call when you have a second or anything like that. They just called. And they were like, well, I called you. Didn't you see that? And I'm like, yeah. They're like, why didn't you call me back? And I'm like, I, I you didn't. You didn't tell me <laughs> you to. You didn't tell me to call you back. Like, why like yeah no i would yeah. just assume it's a it's a butt dial or something well i mean that's the other thing yeah sometimes it's that but also like maybe they solved the problem or or whatever i just i just found it odd that that was the expectation like I why didn't you call me back saw something where it's like historians in the future won't know the difference between a booty call and a, and butt, a butt dial, dial. <laughs> yep and that's why understanding context is important yes yeah, there's. I've actually thought about a lot of those too. I, I thought about it the other day because I was. Um, I still very much le- like to use print when possible. I like to write on things, and if I'm reading a print book, I can better remember it than if I'm reading it digitally. Which there's actually been studies to show that's true for a lot of people. Um, and but I, what did I? I can't remember the exact thing that I commented, but I was reading something in context for like writing a grant or something. And I 
wrote next to it a word and a question mark. And the word in that context meant this kind of grant or something, right? It was like the name yeah. of a grant or whatever, but it was also like a common word. I really can't remember what it was. And I remember thinking people would be so confused by this annotation, like, like in the future or even just outside of me, they'd be like, why did they put this there? What does that mean? And like start <laughs> down a rabbit hole. And I wonder how many times we've done that, right? Like, especially yeah. as an English major, like how many times have we looked back on old manuscripts and been like, but they wrote this. What did they mean by that? And it was like, you know, the, Oh my gosh. Inside joke. Like the, um, uh, there was this post about, uh, like a teacher, telling the kid to like find the symbolism in Shakespeare pointing out that this door is red. Oh, uh-huh. And it's like, this kid is just like, the door is just red. And then the, the teacher's like, no, 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 no. And then it was like this whole comic strip. It was really funny of like this kid that like found out how to make this like time travel machine and everything like that went back in time and got Shakespeare brought him to the teacher's door and then they op she opened the door and then he's just like the door is red <laughs> well speaking of Shakespeare and understanding you know things um in Romeo and Juliet uh I don't remember which one it was Mercutio somebody says I bite I bite my thumb at you right mm -hmm. and that was an insult that was like giving somebody the finger right and like, you don't know that if, if you're unfamiliar with that, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, so it just like, sounds like you're doing something weird, man. Yeah. So you, you'd be like, what my is pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was kind of disturbing. Um, but anyway, yeah. So, and then there's things that we do in our society that are impolite in others. I, yeah. know, I know that there are some hand gestures we make that are that are nice and fine in our society that are insulting in others. There's also some things where like um, different groups or mostly political groups might use uh, like some kind of mythology or historical insignia to represent certain things. And so then those insignias that were like literally just part of like mythology or something like that become offensive yeah. 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 It's so, it's so strange. So I, so, you know, kind of getting back to your original question, not just, not specifically about greeting, but about sort of like generational ideas of politeness in general. I kind of don't understand why people get their knickers in a twist about stuff, you know, because you also, especially if you don't know, know the context, right? And and a lot of times, you know, something something happens, and I and I would I get like a little maybe initially offended, right? And then I sometimes I just sit there and be offended, but other times I'm like, okay, this person is in a different generation than I am. Like, what is that? You know, like maybe that's just not common you know, for them. I will say though, one thing that annoys the heck out of me is ghosting mm. because that is just not cool. <laughs> like, like, no, it's not. No, I, I, you know, especially in a business context, you know, um, I had that when I was looking for jobs, I had that happen multiple times where I would be like in that like first round of top candidates. And then I would just never hear again. You know, I think another thing is, um, I feel like a lot of people in older generations feel like they need to make up more what do you mean? than our generation does make up more. What do you mean? Like if they had a falling out with someone a long time ago and they see them in the future, mm. they, they like are polite with them again. Or I feel like my generation is just like, no, stay away from me. <laughs> okay. Now that, that we don't have enough time to get into this, but that gets into the whole makes me think of the whole thing with, um, uh, family relationships and how there are more and more younger people who are just saying, I, I I'm done with their parents. Yeah. And instead of trying to like keep that familial bond. Yeah. And you know, I, I grew up, uh, believing and i i think this comes for me from a religious upbringing that you like it's like you forgive no matter what right 
the whole blood is thicker than water. Yeah, kind of. I mean, I I know the rest of that. Yeah, I told you. that phrase. <laughs> yeah, the full phrase is the blood of the covenant is stronger than the water of the womb. Yes, right? yeah, yeah, the water of the womb, that's it. Yeah, which I'm like, that's so funny. It literally just flips <laughs> it, just it flips 180. flips it completely the other way. But um, it was... Oh, but what I feel like didn't get talked about a lot at that at that time, and this this was a time when abuse was rampant and covered up and actually excused and all this stuff, um, is that people made forgiveness also mean you have to continue to put up with that thing. Yeah. Right? And so I think you can forgive someone for abusing you, but it doesn't mean you stay in the abusive relationship. Yeah. Like why would you continue to be abused? And I feel like that's something in particular, the boomer generation, um, is having difficulty with because for some of them, their children finally went, I'm, I'm done. I'm going no contact with you because you abused me. You never apologize for it. And every time we get together, you abuse me some more. Like, yeah. you know, maybe not physically anymore, but verbally and or emotionally. And or they'll say stuff to try and like just manipulate you to come back and do things. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and I feel like there's a lot of people in older generations who still are like, well, it's family. You have to stay, you know. And I'm and I'm thinking, no, it's family, so you shouldn't treat people that way. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> like, like that's not, you know, it doesn't work that you just get to treat people however, and they have to stick around. Yeah, you shouldn't just say like, oh, I'm gonna die soon, so you need to hang out with your dear old dad. Not if you have a bad relationship. If yeah. you have a good relationship, I would hope you would want to spend more time with someone. But I mean, if someone yeah. says something like that, like, yeah, that's just yeah, that's not okay. Yeah, yeah. So, lots of lots of. Lots of differences um, between the generations on, hey, on just those things. Don't be a dick. I think that's a that's good advice. Yeah, it's very wise. It's very hard for a lot of people to do, though. Yeah, I do not understand why. Well, I mean, I think we all do jerky things from time to time. Mm, jerky, <laughs> but but yeah, just sort of being well, I mean, a jerk and then expecting everyone else to be fine with it. Yeah, I say there's a difference between like being a jerk in the moment and just being a jerk. Well, yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, there's plenty of times where it's like I'm hanging out with my friends and someone says something that's just like not okay. Yeah. But that if if they say that like every time, then that means the person's not okay. But if right. they say say it like once, maybe they just like had an impulsive thought or something like oh, that. And sure, they and they yeah. said we've all done it. Oh, like yeah. it's I've said some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I've done some shit. <laughs> can't come back from it yeah which is what gets back to my my thought that you can be a polite asshole but you can't be a kind asshole yeah you know um if you're if you're kind you can say a jerky thing here or there but that doesn't make you an asshole yes <laughs> you know yeah so yeah anyway i don't think we solved any generational issues on that but <laughs> can we ever yeah that's an excellent existential question um, but I mean, I don't know. I hope if, if you're listening that maybe helps you think through some of these things. If you're having trouble with getting frustrated with someone for not politely saying hello when they pass you in the park. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well. Well. Time to go. Time to go.